Hi guys and welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to make jacks from the amazing digital circus. Sock plushies are some of my favorite holiday DIYs because they're cheap to make, great for gifts, and they can be customized depending on the recipient. The trickiest part is usually finding socks in the right color for the character you want to create. I was lucky and discovered this combination of purple and neon pink, which have such a great contrast with each other. If you can't find the right colors in shops, then I recommend ordering online and I've added all the links down below where I buy my fluffy socks from. The first thing to do is decide on the proportions of the plush. Jack's is extremely thin and lanky, so it's not quite feasible to make him with the same proportions. I decided to go with a more rounded body shape that can sit down, partially inspired by the official Jack's plush here. However, I also think he'd look good with a typical longish sock monkey type of body. Remember that you don't have to follow every step of this tutorial, so feel free to change up the body shape depending on whichever design you prefer. First, take one sock and turn it inside out. Then press it flat with the heel part facing down. Take a pen and start drawing the ear outline just above the heel area. The most important part is to have all of these sharp angles looking clean and symmetrical. If any of these lines are blurry or unclear, then you might not end up with the distinctive shape of Jax's head. I'm going to use some yellow thread in this video so you can see it better on camera, but for best results, try to match the colors with the fabric. When making these sock plushies, always remember to double up your thread. This makes your stitches much stronger and less likely to rip. Begin by backstitching along the outline, which is one stitch forward and half a stitch back. As always, if you are completely new to making sock plushies, then I strongly recommend watching this video here. Because Jax's ears have all of these little sharp angles in them, it's best to keep your stitches as small as possible. This lets you have more control and create more detail. Once you're done, cut it out carefully, leaving about 5mm of fabric next to the thread. Also make sure that the folded edge of the sock is open on both sides. Now turn the whole piece the right way round, making sure to push the ears all the way out. I'm going to stuff each one lightly with polyester stuffing so they can stand upright, but I don't want to overstuff these, otherwise they'll lose the typical outline of Jax's head. Then I'm grabbing a big ball of stuffing and pushing it into the head. The stuffing technique plays a really important role in making sock plushies. You can control the shape and size just by using different balls of stuffing, so don't be afraid to start over again if you're not happy with the first result. I'm quite pleased with how this looks, so it's time to seal the base. Cut the extra sock fabric off so it leaves a small opening like this. Now sew a running stitch around the opening, which is the easiest type of stitch that goes up and down. Take the thread and then pull it closed like a drawstring. Push the extra fabric inside the hole and then sew a few more running stitches around the opening until it feels secure. After you've tied the knot, exit from another part of the plush, which hides the end of the thread perfectly. To make the body, I'm just going to stuff the toe of the other sock without any sewing. If you want to make a thinner body for Jax, then you can sew off a side section of the sock before stuffing it. I'm cutting off the extra fabric and then closing it up using the exact same technique as before. I have a slightly experimental method in mind to make Jax's overalls and I hope it works. I'm turning one of the pink socks inside out and then pressing the toe flat. Then I'm taking a pen and drawing on the shape of his overalls. In retrospect, the straps here are a bit too thin, so I'd recommend making them at least 5mm wider. I'm cutting everything out so I have a tiny vest like this. And now I'm basically going to dress the body in this, which saves a lot of time compared to cutting out all the clothing panels separately. The only problem I had is that the straps do get stretched out quite a bit and they become thinner. Some parts were almost tearing in half, which is why I recommend making them thicker when you're drawing on the lines. Now start sewing down the edges using small stitches. As you can see, the raw fabric is creating a lot of fluff and this happens all the time when you're making sock plushies. The best way to control this fluff is to stitch along the edge. The smaller your stitches, the less fluff is going to fall out. You can even go over the same edge twice, which really seals the fabric down. Use some tape to remove any fluff that's already fallen out. 
This part is a little bit time consuming, but it's really important to make sure that both colors are smoothly joined up. Please do not use glue for this stage because that hardens when it dries and you'll end up with an unsatisfying crusty edge on your fabric. Now I'm going to close up the base using the same method as before. The great thing about these plushies is that once you get the hang of it, you can make so many different things using the same techniques. Next we're going to attach the head using a ladder stitch. This is where you make one stitch on the body and one on the neck and keep alternating until both of them are joined together. It's best to work in a circular shape so you can see how the head is positioned at all times. Now take the leftover piece of the purple sock and turn it inside out. Then draw two long shapes for Jax's arms. The piece of fabric I have here is a little bit small so I have to be extra careful when sewing and cutting. I'm using a back stitch just like with the ears. Then I'm cutting it out, making a hole in the base, and then turning it the right way round. This should look a bit like the finger on a glove. I'm adding a little bit of stuffing so it has some volume, but I don't want to distort the shape. To make Jax's gloves, I'm going to use this piece of scrap yellow sock from a previous project. I'm turning it inside out and then drawing on two mitten shapes. Some people might be wondering what the point is in turning the sock inside out all the time, especially for a very small piece like this. This is because the texture of the fabric is not the same on both sides, and there's a tiny noticeable difference in fluffiness. So it's always good to just get in the habit of working from the reverse side of the sock, no matter what you're making. Now I'm just going to flip them around and pull them over Jax's hands like real mittens. There's no need to stuff this part because the thickness of the fabric adds quite a bit of volume. I'm attaching both of them onto the body using a ladder stitch. You can make his legs in exactly the same way if you want to. However, as I mentioned earlier, I want to create a sitting plushie, so I need to have two round balls for the feet. To make these, I'm going to start by cutting out two large circles from the remaining purple fabric. Sew a running stitch around the edge like this. Place some stuffing into the center of the circle and push it inside while pulling the thread close with your other hand. I'm always amazed by how much can fit inside here, so don't be afraid to use more stuffing than you think you need. Once you have a nice firm ball, use some crisscross stitches to close the opening. Then ladder stitch this onto the body using the same thread. To make the face, I'm placing the last bit of the yellow fabric over the head and then drawing on Jax's mouth. This is his trademark grin, so I'm going to spend a bit of time making sure the shape looks just right. His mouth should fill up the bottom half of his face, but with a border of purple visible from all sides. It can also be slightly asymmetrical, which is what it often looks like on the show. Then I'm going to sew all the edges down, and once again, please don't be tempted to use glue for this part. Now I'm going to repeat the process for the eyes. Unlike the official plush, I prefer Jax's oval eye shape over the half moon shape. I think this makes him look slightly more devious. For the details, I'm going to use black fabric felt and then cutting out a lot of very thin strips. For this part, you can and should use fabric glue because there's no other way to attach these on neatly. Apply a thin line of glue and then stick one of the black lines onto the teeth. Then trim and repeat with all the rest. I'm not sure if it's the mouth, but Jax's character gives me major Sans from Undertale vibes. They seem to have the same type of personality. To make the eyes, I'm also going to cut out some black felt and then trimming it to fit. Jax's facial features are not that well suited for using beads, buttons or embroidery. The only other method I can imagine would work is to make each element using needle felt and then sewing it all in place. For the final touches, I'm going to make the buttons using a tiny piece of yellow. I also found this pink sock, which is the perfect color for his pocket. When making sock plushies, be sure to keep all your fabric scraps because you never know when you might need a certain color for a future project. For instance, I was so glad that I found the last bits of the yellow sock for this DIY. For the same reason, I'm being as economical as possible and cutting the pink square out from the uppermost part of the sock. This means I can still use the heel and toe area for something else. And now Jax is finished. 
I absolutely love the amazing digital circus right now, and I'll be creating more DIYs inspired by it. I find the character design is excellent because everyone is so recognizable based on a few key elements like color and shape. This makes them ideal for DIYs because you can play around with the body proportions or other stylistic aspects, and they're still clearly recognizable. I hope you enjoy this video, and please subscribe if you want to see more. I'm Joanna. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.